This video is going to be discussing external CSS. So to refresh some of what we've seen in the last two videos, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. There are three types of CSS. Inline CSS applies only to a particular tag. That is the type of CSS that we have to re-copy and paste into uh, each tag where we want that formatting to apply. Internal CSS is also known as embedded CSS and that's actually what we're still looking at on the screen here. What we made in the last video, these are CSS rules that rather than being on every single tag, they are placed within the style tags, within a, a pair of open and closing style tags inside the head section of our page. Rules that are specified inside those style tags in our internal or embedded CSS apply to that particular document, to the entire page. So in this video, we're looking at external CSS. And external CSS is when we want the CSS to apply to more than just this page, we want it to apply to our whole site. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our CSS in an external document that we call, you know, file name .css. And we can attach that document to our, uh, we can attach that document to any of our HTML pages. So what I want to do in this video is to actually take this page that we created in the last video and convert this internal CSS into external CSS. If we look in the CSS styles panel, we can see that these rules are in between the style tag because right up here at the top it shows us a style tag. We could minimize that, but if we expand it out, we see the rules that we have defined and that they are inside this style tag. I'm going to go ahead and, oops, excuse me, I want to click on one of these and I want to right click and choose move CSS rules. And I'm going to move them to a new style sheet. MyStyles.css is going to be the name of this file, although I, you know, could have picked uh, any name. I just would need to end in that .css extension. I'm going to go ahead and just hit save. So now in the CSS styles panel, if you look over here on the right, I see both the rules within the style section and I see the rules on this new page where it says MyStyles. Dot CSS, and I see that's where my H1 rule is. I've moved it. If I look back over on my code, I see that that rule is no longer here. So I've decreased the amount of code on this page, and I've created a new file that all of my pages can link to. And by linking there, they you know, can all use the same file. I don't have to put all of this internal or embedded CSS on every single page of my, you know, 400 page website. I can just keep linking back to this file. So they linked here and in another video I might talk about why this link is not relative to the site root folder. Um, the short version, well this is kind of simplified, but I haven't even created a site, a site root folder uh, for this exercise because I just plan on throwing these pages out. But basically, I have a line that links to the file that I've created. And so when I'm creating new pages, if I were to create a new HTML page, you'll notice I have this choice to attach a CSS file 
and I could just attach the file that I had previously created. So what I did here, if you were watching the steps that I was following, is I created this new page. And I went ahead and put in the words heading one. I formatted them as heading one. And they went ahead and applied by that style that I'd already defined for heading one. If I end up changing this style, If I go back to my other document, we'll see it's changed. Now these are blue with the red or pink uh, text instead of being that green. And I think the, the other one was more of a neon uh, pink. My point is I only have to make these changes in one place. And all of a sudden they have applied to all of the pages that have linked here to that particular style sheet. So probably want to go ahead and move all of these rules. I could have actually used the shift key and selected them all and moved them all at once. I'm just having a little bit of a problem with my keyboard this evening. Now that I look under the CSS styles panel, I see underneath the style tags, there's nothing. They're empty. And then in my external sheet, I have a number of rules. So let's go ahead and create a new rule. I'm going to create a rule for the unordered list, which we do have one of those down here. For now, it's actually been unused. Now down here where I said before we were going to pick this document only, I'm actually going to pick this file. If I was starting from scratch, if I had not already made a CSS file, I could have just picked new style sheet file and it would have prompted me to come up with a name. Trying to remember, I do think it's here. Um, let's go ahead and change these from circles to squares. And it's a little subtle, but hopefully you can see that, you know, they're now squares. And they're right here. The UL tag is defined uh, right underneath my mystyles.css file. It is possible to start out with a CSS file or to attach it after the fact. When we go to new, we could have actually even picked that we wanted to, to start out with a CSS file. Just wanted to let you know that that, that was there and a, an option. Okay, so I want to go ahead and summarize what we've looked at in all three of these videos. We found out that there's three types of CSS, inline, internal, or embedded, and external. External is our preferred way to format. We are going to reduce errors this way. We're going to have the least amount of code. Um, you know, we're not, it's going to be easier for other people to come back and edit our page if they need to. The next method is inter, um, I'm sorry, internal or embedded CSS. It's on that page, but we have to include it on each individual page. And finally, we looked at inline CSS, which was within the tag. We really should try to avoid using inline CSS. In fact, I can't actually even think of a reason why we would need to use inline CSS. I know right now you might be thinking, well, one reason is, what if I didn't want this particular paragraph to be orange? What if I wanted this particular paragraph to be something else? maybe green. Wouldn't I use inline there to go ahead and say 
that I want this one to be green. You know, well, I could do that, but there's actually a, a better way around that. There's a better way to format this, and I could have this area appear green, but still use external CSS. And that's something that I'm actually not gonna talk about until we get to layouts. But what we wanna take away from this sequence of videos is just our three types of CSS, inline, internal or embedded, and external. And that external is always our preferred method for formatting. And we really should not be using inline CSS at all. I mean, you might have used it in a earlier web design class, uh, maybe in 115. Uh, you might have used uh, CSS when you're first learning HTML. You might have used inline, but we really want to be using external CSS for our projects. In some of the activities, we might be using internal or embedded CSS because we're only creating one page. Uh, but really we should be moving to external and we should definitely be using external in our project. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video now.